Welcome back to the RipeWave Audio community, where we explore together all types of home audio systems from hi-fi to home theater. My name is John, and for this video, we continue our series on AV processors and receivers as a buyer's guide to what is available in 2020. Our ninth video in this series is subtitled Part 9, 1, with three channels, and complements Parts 1 through 8, where we explored 16, 15, 13, 12, 10, 9, 8, and 6-channel processor models. If you miss previous videos of the AV Processor Receivers Buyer's Guide 2020 series, I have provided the links for your convenience in the description. Not to be confused with left, center, right LCR three-channel processing, this three-channel count is left, right plus subwoofer and is aligned with the convention RipeWave Audio has been using throughout this series. Counting as such, the LCR plus sub configuration is considered to be a four-channel processor and is a configuration which RipeWave Audio was not able to find in any currently available models. Now, if you know of a four-channel processor with LCR plus sub outfits, we would like to know. With only one model in this category, it is no surprise that our 2020 processor by channel count table shows the three-channel model representing less than 1% of the 121 included models, and we still have 18, 20, 24, and 32 channel models to add. As the focus of this series is on AV audio-visual processors that can process surround sound, a receiver, integrated amp, and preamp separate that does not have support for any of the surround sound decoding uh, or even HDMI inputs is not included, even if it has a subwoofer output. As such, finding a model that fully meets this criteria at this count is a challenge. Given it is a niche use case, we can expect this. Moving from six channels with 5.1 configurations to three channel setups drops surround speakers altogether for a simplistic 2.1 front left, front right, and subwoofer deployment. To the cost of entry table, we add the three-channel model, which is the Pioneer Elite SX S30 and sets the cost of entry for that category at $499. So we end up with three channels at $499 for 2.1 configuration, six channels 5.1 at $278, less than the three channels, the 8-channel 7.1 at $350, 9-channel 7.2 at $1,100, 10-channel 9.1 at $680, 12-channel 11.1 at $799, 13-channels 11.2 at $1,200, 15-channels 13.2 at $2,499, and finally, 16 channels, 14.2 at $2,999. To confirm the Pioneer Elite SX S30 even met the criteria for supporting surround sound decoding, we had to consult its manual as the product page Pioneer has on their website does not mention any surround sound capability. Furthermore, the typically poor execution of a website compare products function was found to be useless with no data, data in any fields, including the decoders and format category that was blank for this model, um, but not their next model out, up, the VSX LX104. Once again, the manual proves to be the best source of truth and provides several pages providing multi-channel decoding uh, details, including the general specification on page 52. 
Pioneer Elite SXS30. The Pioneer Elite SXS30 qualifies as a slimline model. The connectivity this model provides is basic for an AV receiver. Having HDMI connectivity is also a, a must to qualify as an AV receiver. And this unit has four HDMI inputs and one HDMI output. With the SXS30, surround playback is always virtual and its decoding is limited to the non-immersive formats. This unit has support for two analog stereo sources plus a phono input. Launched in 2019, this model has Pioneer's MCACC room calibration software and sells for $499. As stated earlier, the three-channel category is niche. And with soundbars so popular right now, the audience for this configuration is small. HDMI connected self-powered bookshelf speakers with a subwoofer output like Klipsch's The Fives are also pulling more buyers away from low count traditional receivers. However, The Fives don't fully qualify under our criteria as they don't provide surround sound decoding or simulation. However, sound bars like the Klipsch's Bar 48 does support Dolby and DTS decoding and will either simulate with its virtual surround mode or pair wirelessly with their surround three speakers. Furthermore, the Clips Bar 48 comes with a wireless subwoofer. Aside from the sound bar being one speaker versus two separate front speakers, the Clips approach is likely to drive the small count deployment market going forward. Given that sound bars and self-powered speaker solutions eliminate a box and simplify setup, RipeWave Audio does not see much of a future for the 3-channel 2.1 or even 6-channel 5.1 AV receivers. If you own a 3-channel receiver, I would be interested in hearing your feedback. Please include in the comments section. Do you feel that a sound bar or self-powered speaker system approach is the future for low-cost counts? That feedback would be useful to the RipeWave audio community. Furthermore, if you enjoyed this video and are interested in enhancing your audio experience, please like and subscribe to this RipeWave audio community and be sure to select the bell icon so you will be notified as soon as the next video is posted. Until then, Keep evolving your audio experience.